Donc voilà, nous sommes prêtes, nous sommes en thème. Euh, Val est dans le thème euh, Give and Take In. Roman est dans le thème Let Me In. Et Marie est dans le thème Fever. Anyways, vous êtes belles, il fait chaud. Today, 
here at Deutsche Bank Park in Frankfurt to spend the best time of your lives. Please, don't hold back in showing all of your love and passion. Jinji Berai. K-pop class. Tonight, meet the best artist to fill Frankfurt's night of spectacular. Worldwide Fresh Performance Group and Hyphen. Just me, Idol! Girl Crush, Mama Move!
해볼 수 있고 이렇게 그런 행복한 너무 좋겠는데요 여러분들이 주시면 
드디어 대회라고 처음으로 대회에 왔습니다 이렇게 많이 아 이렇게 많은 행사 보내주셔서 너무너무 감사합니다 So much. <laughs> 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 I think everyone is slowly falling for us. Uh, shall we move? We're falling! 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 We're So Thank you! <laughs> Thank you.
그동안 유럽 팬분들과 직접 만나지 못해서 정말 너무너무 안타까웠는데요 우리 유럽 팬분들이 긴 시간 동안 테이팝을 들으며 힘내서 기다려 주셨다고 합니다 네, 그 결과 결국 마침내 오늘 이 순간이 왔습니다 <웃음> 
저희 무대는 아마 또 데뷔곡인 브레이드였습니다 다들 즐겁게 보셨나요? 저희 ABC2도 함께하게 되어서 정말 너무너무 영광인데요 저희가 또 좋은 소식을 가져왔죠 우진씨 네 바로바로 바로 5월 18일 또 ABC2의 다섯 번째 미니앨범이 발매되었습니다 <웃음> 네 여러분 보고 싶은 무대 있으신가요? 너무 <웃음> 좋습니다 <웃음> 오케이 맞습니다 바로 그 곡이에요 아주 상큼 발랄한 곡이죠 체위 보여드리도록 하겠습니다 <웃음> 
계시는 팬 여러분들 보니까 이 에너지도 받는 것 같고요 그리고 또 웅장한 그리고 여러분들의 한숨 소리 응원 소리 이 곡을 선택하게 됐습니다 드디어 여러분께 보여드릴 수 있어서 정말 기쁘고요 다음 무대 보여드리기 전에 물 잠깐 마시고 잠시만요 
Just passed by with a, a sightseeing tour bus and we saw like people streaming next to the Steinberger Hotel so we're going to see what's happening but there's a lot of people it's for sure K-pop like what would you expect? No, but you're just devant. What is the luck that we just passed by with a sightseeing tour and see this? Like, what are the odds? today to speak about K-pop flex. It's been a few days so we kind of like digested everything that kind of went wrong. We laughed a lot so yeah in the end I had like an amazing weekend but things need to be addressed. We already know there's going to be a next time. If there's going to be a good next time they need to improve. I don't want people to feel the way I was feeling Saturday evening being like if I had to go tomorrow would I go? Which is a very bad thought to have because you want to support the artist, you want to see the artist, you want to have a good time with the artist. But when the organization is messy as hell, then you're just like, I don't necessarily feel safe to go. I was there only on Saturday. I think I want to start from like the first thing and it's how it was announced and how the artists were announced and the entire like program change. Only going to talk about my experience and about what friends told me. Right before in Hypein was announced, I decided, we decided with my friends to get tickets because we were actually almost sure that Hypein was going to be announced next. It's a group I've been standing since day one. I really want to see them live because I don't think they're going to come to Europe so soon. So it was the opportunity I did didn't want to miss. I was already considering going because I knew that Monster X were performing and then we had like other groups already announced like NCT Dream I think and Idol. Let's go get tickets, everything's great. This lineup is already crazy. Let's see what they are going to announce next. We got our tickets and Hypen was announced next. They announced the entire lineup and then they announced Kai. Kai was the last. 
artists on the lineup. Amazing, you know, like big surprise. Having seen Super M in concert in 2020, so having seen Kai on stage, I was like, okay, that's a great bonus, you know, I, I don't say no to that, like it's really good, but my focus was definitely on in Hypen in Monster X. And then I, everything changed. Okay, due to complaints and such, the tickets were selling throughout like the programmation announcement which was throughout like two months i think logically if you announce like i don't know five groups you're going to have like less tickets to sell when you announce the six artists so the fact that like the last artist was such a in french we say tête d'affiche like people were going crazy because like there were like no tickets left they added a second day but the thing i'm asking myself thinking back i was like was the second day actually already planned beforehand? Did they actually mess with us the entire time? And like, we're like, oh, we're going to do one day, but we have like a second day in mind. At that time we were like, okay, second day, like great for people who cannot like come on the first day. People were complaining. Oh, but we are not going to see Kai or whatsoever, you know? The second day artists were not announced. Logically, you can think that maybe it's like the same ones. Then on the first day, because they're already in Europe, then we got an email, we got an announcement that due to schedule things or whatsoever matters, Monster X was going to shift from Saturday to Sunday. What the actual heck? Every mom baby who kind of like bought a ticket for Saturday to see Monsex and maybe all the groups were kind of like bound to buy a second ticket or like change their tickets because that was an option. Luckily enough, they gave us an option. At some point, I was happy that something was happening in Europe. So I was like, it's fine, you know, like we're going to see like so many artists on one scene, like it's fun, you know. So I wasn't really realizing in the moment how problematic it was. So we decided to stay or like leave our tickets for Saturday and not buy a ticket for Sunday. I wanted to see an hyphen, okay, like I love Monster X. I did already see them in 2019, considering the fact like how Monster X is kind of like evolving currently, like members are going from the literary. I could have gone on Sunday for sure. That's such a big <laughs> regret though. I traveled on the same day, like on Saturday morning, I left Switzerland. K-pop Flex was kind of like selling us this entire like, come and try our food in our festival and like a K-festival whatsoever. And we have some animations and some like things going on, come and enjoy that. Very nice. Uh, we were kind of late, so we didn't really enjoy it, but I have to say that I don't know if people were able to enjoy it if they did not come like when the gate opened because when the right thing there first gate with the security security wasn't checking literally anything all right if they have faith in people going through those gates they ask you how you are you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine I was in full shock my agoraphobia literally went like alert but you need to get through that because Otherwise, you're not going to enjoy the moment. You were coming in and you could see Q everywhere and people everywhere. It was like in a zombie movie. People like walking like this next to each other, trying to reach something, but not knowing what. That was it. We wanted to get food and drinks before the actual concert. We went there at like four. The thing was starting at like six. On the day, they announced that the concert was not starting at six like they told us before, but we had a pre-show and the concert was like starting at eight. Two hours pre-show. But you know, I had my hopes up. I was like, oh, maybe they're going to do like collabs between the artists or like, I don't know, a collab with a dance crew or something like that. My mind was somewhere else, you know, like the crowd was insane. I was internally freaking out. We wanted food and something to drink. You couldn't tell who was queuing for what station? It was a freaking mess. We split it in two. A group went for food, a group went for drinks. Literally, the queue was a mess. Like, we didn't know where the queue was. People were aggressive. We waited, I think, an hour for like the drinks and maybe an hour and a half for like the food. Does it sound all right for you? So you couldn't tell which was the queue for the food, which was the queue for like entering because K-pop fans do queue before because they want to get first in front of the stage. Like 
didn't you know that? Please organize yourself like a little bit better, like tell your staff that. I had a feedback from a girl who did queue to like be in front of like barricade or such. And she was telling me that like the staff didn't know whatsoever. They had like three different categories for like the standing area. And like some people who had the same ticket as me were allowed entry in another section. I don't necessarily care because they were queuing for like five hours. Lucky them, I appreciate the fact that they had a nice experience, but from like the organizational point of view, it's a mess. Felt like an apocalyptic movie. I think we entered the stadium at like six. We're just going to like have the view we are having and it's fine. Like I think people paid 110 euros to watch the concert through a screen. And that after a pandemic and that after online concerts feels truly awful. The stage was like so freaking low. When we entered the venue, we were like, where's the stage? You know, we couldn't see it. Next time, either I pay more to be like in front or I pay seated. I have to say we had a very nice time. It was fun. Uh, we kind of like made the best out of the waste. We had two hour pre-show and then they made us wait for like 40 minutes without any music on, without any entertainment on. You know, we're K-pop fans, we like to build up a certain atmosphere or such and have fun. So at least play K-pop in the background and we are going to enjoy ourselves. I cannot speak for Sunday, but I, I think it felt very, very messy and very disorganized. The only problem I have with this is that surely we're impacted as the spectators. The image it gives to the artists and the labels is that your appearance event organizers are not competent enough to organize such events. So are we going to come back? And that's the issue I have with that. It doesn't do us any favor either, and it's bad for the artists too. I mean, if it wasn't for the artists and the show they give us, I wouldn't even consider going back because everything else was like, Awful. I think I've seen something on Twitter that kind of like sums up everything quite well actually. A lot of people told me that like the organization was so messy and so bad and then at the end of the show they told us oh save the date we're going to do a K-pop Flex 2023. Okay you're a mess and I don't want to criticize. I don't know what's happening internally with the organizer, etc. but do better. And in terms of communication, do better. Brief your staff, be transparent with what's going to happen. Give out all the information beforehand so that we don't feel wrong or played. That's not even complicated, like that's very easy. I think the communication aspect is a very easy thing to do. And then the entire logistical aspect might be a little harder because it might require more money. My concert footage is not the best ever because I was actually quite in the back. Yeah, it is what it is and I hope it gives a sense of the experience that we had because we had a very nice time and we had lots of fun during the concert but as well between us like friends despite the entire like k-pop flex mess we actually keep very good memories of that weekend thank you for listening to me and bye